This is Matador News, and these are today's headlines. Los Angeles teachers reach a tentative agreement with the school district. Chinese construction workers find 63 million year old dinosaur eggs. And CSUN students await this spring's Matador Nights. Hello, and welcome to Matador News. I'm Cassie Yanagasho. And I'm Jordan Salceda. Saudi Arabia airstrikes have resumed in Yemen after a pause that lasted for less than 24 hours. Now, Houthi rebels are calling for peace talks and a halt to fighting. Saudi Arabia proposed a new campaign called the Operation Renewal of Hope to focus on the political process. The Saudis want to restore the Yemeni government ousted earlier this year. President Obama says the U.S. has warned Iran and the Saudis not to deliver weapons to rebels in Yemen. The U.S. Navy sent the USS Theodore Roosevelt and the missile cruiser Normandy to the Gulf of Aden to ensure shipping lanes in the area be open and safe. Iranian cargo ships were spotted on the Yemen coast following the move. The Saudis and their allies hope to establish security and stability with the military campaign. Pope Francis will visit Cuba later this year. The visit is expected to happen in early September, just before he visits to the U.S. Pope Francis played a pivotal role in restoring diplomatic relations between Cuba and the United States. Since his election in 2013, Pope Francis has made international affairs a priority. His involvement with the U.S. and Cuba has earned him praise from both President Obama and Cuban President Raul Castro. Pope Francis will be the third consecutive pope to visit Cuba. Pope Francis is expected to continue his international activism with visits to Ecuador, Bolivia, and Paraguay. The U.S. Navy has rescued nearly 300 migrants from another sinking ship in the Mediterranean. Five of the rescued were medically evacuated to island Malta, while the rest were transferred to an offshore patrol vessel. This year's death toll in the Mediterranean Sea allegedly has surpassed 1,500 victims. Thousands of migrants are fleeing South Asia, the Middle East, and Asia to get away from violence, terrorism, and poverty. Southern Italy is a frequent gateway for those seeking to enter European countries. European leaders are holding an emergency meeting tomorrow to discuss what to do. No strike for now. The Los Angeles Unified School District and the Teachers Union have reached a tentative contract settlement for a three-year deal. UTLA President Richard Valdivic says a tentative agreement for teachers proposes a 10% pay raise, smaller class size, and a 500 to 1 student to counselor ratio. This uh, contract agreement is good for students, it's good for educators, and it's good for communities. Uh, there are immediate concrete improvements that are involved with it, and there's also language that allows for more improvement over time for teaching conditions and learning condition. The deal could end more than a year of organized campaigning for higher wages. UTLA teachers have not received a raise for eight years. Now the 31,000 teachers have to vote on whether or not to approve the proposal. Now let's go to Victor Park for the latest in health. Do you like sushi? Yes, I love sushi. You might want to hear this. A salmonella outbreak in California that has made 25 people sick could be linked to the raw tuna in sushi. More than 80% of the affected patients reported eating raw tuna as well as sushi. Health officials say this particular strain of salmonella has not been seen in humans or animals until last month, which makes dealing with it challenging. Officials say they are still investigating the cause of the outbreak. They say right now eating raw fish and tuna can probably put you at risk. Bluebell Ice Cream has expanded their recall, ordering all of its products off the shelves after a deadly listeria outbreak. Three people reportedly died from it uh, in Kansas. Now CEO Paul Cruz is apologizing. We are heartbroken over this situation and apologize to all of our loyal Bluebell fans and customers. He says the company is committed to fixing the problem, but the CDC says the outbreak dates back to 2010. The bacteria can cause serious, even fatal infections to children and the elderly. If you have any of the Bluebell's products in the fridge, you can return it for a full refund. New research says breast cancer rates will rise by a staggering 50% by the year 2030. 
The study finds women over 70 will experience high risk for postmenopausal breast cancer. That's 40 million women in the U.S. born between 1946 and 1964. Researchers say the aging of baby boomers is the reason for the increase, but it's not all bad news. In fact, a study from American Association for Cancer Research also says some strains will become less common among women. Women in their 20s and 30s will only see a slightly higher risk of premenopausal cancer. Kylie Jenner is known for her full lips. Some of her fans have created a new trend on social media tagged the Kylie Jenner Challenge. The challenge, the challenge rather calls for people to put their lips in a shot glass while sucking. The trend is done to make their lips look as full as Jenner's. Doctors say this new trend is very dangerous. There is a potential risk for scarring and disfigurement if done repeatedly. Jenner has tweeted about the trend. She inspired, or she says she has inspired people or her fans, and girls should just be themselves. And that's it for health. Now let's go to Ashton Smith with the latest on business. Thank you. The new McDonald's CEO says he has a turnaround plan to help the struggling fast food chain in just 10 days. CEO Steve Easterbrook, who has only been in office for seven weeks, told analysts change was urgent and imminent, but refused to disclose any details of the plan. The turnaround plan comes at a good time because McDonald's stock has been declining for nearly two years. Its first quarter profits fell by nearly $400 million, and the company announced it will be closing 350 more of its struggling restaurants on top of the 350 it had already planned on closing this year. Despite the decline in profits, McDonald's stock jumped over 2 million percent Wednesday because investors say they are hopeful that Easterbrook will bring a strong plan. The already sky-high rent prices in Los Angeles are getting higher. New reports from Zillow.com say the average monthly rent in L.A. rose by $115 from just a year ago. Experts say residents need to earn a minimum of $33 an hour to afford the average rental price of $1,800. However, studies show millennials delay the home buying process and prefer to rent. Real estate agents say student loan debt is preventing lenders from offering students adequate mortgage loans for them to buy a house. Research shows fewer than half of the homes for sale are affordable to adults between the ages of 23 and 34. Google is set to unveil its new U.S. wireless service for smartphones sooner than expected. The Wall Street Journal says Google's new wireless system will use the networks of Sprint and T-Mobile and users will pay only for the volume of data they use each month. That means users would only pay when they make calls, use apps, or listen to music as opposed to common wireless service agreements that charge a bulk rate for data. Last month, a Google executive said the company was launching a cell phone network to introduce technology that it wants to see carriers such as Verizon and AT&T start using. Now let's go back to Victor and see what's going on in the sports world. Yeah, the Carson City Council unanimously uh, approves a stadium proposal for the San Diego Chargers and Oakland Raiders. More than 15,000 signatures were collected in support of the ballot initiative, almost twice the number required. The 26-page initiative petition pledged that no tax dollars would be used. Both the Chargers and the Raiders continue to pursue stadiums in their current cities, but a special advisor for the Chargers says the franchise is serious about the Carson plan. Well, here's some bad news for you Dodgers fans. The San Francisco Giants shut down first place Dodgers and at the AT&T Park last night. With runners on second and third, two outs, the Giants taking advantage of Dodgers defense, scored two runs off and a throwing error from Adrian Gonzalez in the fourth. And in the bottom of the eighth inning with a 3-1 count, Justin Maxwell came up hit big hitting a two-run homer into left field just before the foul line. The Giants ruined the Dodgers' seven-game winning streak in, six, in a 6-2 victory. The Dodgers will face the Giants for the second game of the series tonight with the first pitch at 7:15. That's a look at sports. Now, ready to be entertained? Let's go to Ashton and see what's going on with the latest in the entertainment world. A leak of pages from the all-new X-Men comic book series reveals that Marvel's original character Iceman is gay. In the four-page sequence, Iceman, whose real name is Bobby Drake, is told by mind-reading mutant Jean Grey that he prefers men. Fans took to social media to debate the news with many pointing at the fact that Bobby appears to be outed without his consent. They also discussed the fact that the future version of the Iceman character is presented as straight and has had relationships with women. 
Writers say the leak scene is just the first little chapter of a much larger story that will be told. Sandra Bullock has been named the world's most beautiful woman by People magazine. Bullock is the second Oscar winner in a row to appear on the cover of the annual issue, with Lupita Nyong'o named 2014's Most Beautiful Woman. Bullock, who is 50, told People magazine she laughed when she heard she received this year's honor. Matador News reporter Harry Abelson is live in the newsroom with the report of Matador Nights for this Friday. Thanks, Ashton. This semester's Hawaiian-themed Matador Nights is taking place Friday night at 9. I walked around campus today to get the response from students and event officials. USU Events Department Manager Sally Harrison says there are many new additions to this week's event. Luau classes um, where you can learn how to dance in the style that they would at Luau's and then we'll have our special DJs this year Havana Brown and DJ Nick Ferrer and then our um, starting DJ will be DJ Butter to warm us up for the evening. Students are also excited for Matador Nights and say it's a can't miss opportunity. And then right before finals so it's like that little bit of fun before school is out so and it's free so I mean you can't help but not go. It's free, like it's free. When I saw the flyer, I thought, oh, that's so cool. They're doing a whole like luau night and they're making it really like festive and Hawaiian. Tickets for CSUN students only are still available at the ticket office of the USU. Admission for the event is free for students. Now let's talk, toss it back to Cassie in the newsroom. Today marks Earth Day's 45th anniversary. It's a worldwide celebration where people unite and promote environmental causes. This year's celebration focuses on the world's largest environmental campaign, A Billion Acts of Green. The campaign is designed to raise awareness and call attention to at taking action on environmental issues. CSUN is joining the effort by preparing for its very own Earth Fair on campus. The fair is designed to inform students and promote the consumption of organic foods and healthy eating habits. Students are invited to participate in outdoor yoga, arts and crafts, giveaways, and interactive activities. The all-day event will begin at 10 in the morning and will take place on Bahrain Hall. A blob of warm water in the Pacific Ocean is threatening the ecosystem and may be intensifying West Coast drought. The blob is about 1,000 miles long and 100 yards deep. Waters in the blob are 5.5 degrees warmer than normal. New Scientist magazine says some marine species are exploring the warmer waters, leading some fish to migrate from their normal habitats. The NOAA says sea lion pups have been found extremely underweight and are dying, possibly because there are fewer things to eat in the ocean. The blob might also be having an effect on rain and snow. Officials say that the snowpack in California hit an all-time low this year. President Obama is leading a debate on the economic dangers of climate change. The president flew in this morning to Florida. The White House hopes to issue new rules on carbon pollution and greenhouse gases. The White House made clear the ways climate could affect people's health and their property values. Rising sea levels in Florida could threaten the state's $82 billion tourism eco economy and the drinking water for more than 7 million Americans. Republicans were dismissing the visit as a plot to promote policies they called job killers. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest says Obama's trip is an effort to raise the debate on climate change, and the Republicans choose to deny this. Construction workers have discovered 43 fossilized dinosaur eggs in China. Workers found the eggs while repairing a road in China's Guangdong province. The eggs were located in Haiyan City, which calls itself home of the dinosaurs. Geological dating shows that these eggs are dated back to the late Cretaceous period 65 million years ago. Nearly 17,000 dinosaur eggs have been found in the city since 1996. 19 of the eggs are fully intact. Researchers do not yet know which of the species of dinosaurs these eggs belong to. That's all for today. I'm Jordan Salceda. I'm Cassie Anagasho. I'm Victor Park. And I'm Ashton Smith. Thank you for watching Matador News.